depressing. Very strong indeed. All right, here we go. It is game number two in the winner's match of Group A of the second stage of the groups of the Dutch StarCraft League Open of 2014 in the bottom left corner of the map. It is the Dutchman, the Protoss, the part-time comedian. It is Harstum. And his opponent uh, from Germany, from Clan Cascade, has shown us an excellent game number one. Can he continue? Can he make a little bit of an upset in the Dutch StarCraft League? Put your hands together for Hanfi. <laughs> Man, Hanfi up 1-0. That is, uh, well, as far as upsets go of tonight, that is uh, an upset. I mean, like we've said before, I've, I, I, I just keep repeating it because I love it. Harrison qualified yesterday for the round of 16 of Premier League, of uh, the, the EU Premier League of, uh, of the WCS. That is the Blizzard uh, World Championships, basically. And uh, that is amazing because this guarantees Harrison a spot in Premier League for next season. And of course, also uh, means that he will be going to Köln, right? To Köln uh, yep. to play uh, to play because the round of 16 is played live for WCS. So that means that Harsim is actually going to go offline and uh, visit the event, and we'll be able to see his lovely face on the stream as he beats everybody that he meets. I'd love to see his parents in uh, in Germany cheering him on. I remember last year at the Dutch Starcraft League, his parents uh, being there and uh, shaking my hand, saying. Uh, Thank you so much. I was like, uh, th thanks for what? Well, we don't really get the game uh, that much, but uh, you explained it uh, uh, real well. And I was like, Th thanks, guys. And I didn't know they were the parents of Arsenal, but I found out later. I was like, oh, that's so that's so cute. They're so supportive, and uh, they were genuinely really nice. So yeah. always cool to see that kind of support uh, to your children. And uh, Arsenal just has a lot of support overall, even from the from the StarCraft community. Uh, yeah, everybody loves this guy. He's a guy who came up through the ranks, right? I believe it was with mouse mouse control at one point, right? Yep. It's not surprising though, because this year is, of course, the year of Harstam. Uh, <laughs> the, the very first year of Harstam. I should have uh, known. Accurately. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, he's uh, he's been doing well. And uh, I think yesterday he surprised everybody. And he played so well. But uh, remember though, he, he practiced for the WCS only to play against one race. And today he's playing yeah. against different races. I mean, he played true. really good against Jackie, Jackshi. And uh, later he played really good against Bunny, but uh, those, those are both Terran players, and right now he's playing against Zergs and Protosses. Yep, different matchup, and like you said, he might have been going all out with his uh, PVT practice going into this uh, his WCS group, which consisted of three three other Terrans. Uh, of course, it was tough for the Terrans, but all tough, but they had to prepare not an advantage there, being the only Protoss. Um, and he took that advantage by the throat. And then jumped off a bridge with that advantage and made sure that nobody else got it. And he made it out of the group first. Yeah, but I mean, uh, a lot of uh, a lot of the Dutch players, uh, like a lot of the professional players, do play uh, do play Protoss. That's a good indication of that. But we still have uh, U-Thermal also uh, participating in the WCS and in the Dutch StarCraft League as uh, yes. the Darren flag holder for the Netherlands. Uh, Don't forget say. to tune in tomorrow because tomorrow it will be U-Thermal's group in WCS. I yep. really hope that he will make it out as well, so that we have two Dutch players in the round of 16. And of course, later on, it will be Grubby playing in yet another group. So we actually have three Dutchmen in the in the Premier League right now. And of course, these three Dutchmen are also in the Dutch StarCraft League, together with another Premier League player, which is Golden from Korea. Yeah, I, I, I remember, uh, I told a few of my friends I'm always uh, casting for the Dutch StarCraft League. Sometimes they tune in, and uh, one or two of them actually said, wait, you, you got, you got re revenge? Playing there now, and you got Golden. You got, wait, you got you got Harstam and then Grubby play. You uh, Dermal? Are this, you a legit tournament? <laughs> it, 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 it's actually uh, like are these players actually participating? And like, yeah, and I think there are most of them are watching every uh, every time now because they're like, uh, yeah, this is a very high level. Uh, we see uh, we not only get the Dutch StarCraft League in the Netherlands, but we also get to see the very best players from the Netherlands participating in it. And that's uh, that's really cool. Back I to the game that we do see right. a little bit of a poke from Harston, but not too much uh, super exciting going on right now. There's going to be a little bit of a skirmish here, Frank, and that's uh, one of the first skirmishes of the game. Yep. No blood has been drawn yet. Oh, there's the first blood, actually. Two Zerglings have gone down now. Yep, uh, I think one of the, the scouting yeah. Zerglings was uh, was the first to go early on. He has to be a little bit careful here. He's yeah. uh, taking a lot of damage on the Mothership Core, and he's being chased away by these Zerglings as well. You always want to put some pressure on just to pour some units out from your, uh, from your Zerg opponent. Hamfi actually uh, getting a little bit supply blocked here, which is uh, slightly uh, slightly sloppy. Getting a lair as well, so uh, looks like he wants to go into a longer game, but which Zerg doesn't, right? Which Zerg doesn't? 
Well, of course, Zerg is uh, is a race which has a very um, a characteristic, really early game tactic in the six pool. Uh, but apart from that, I'm not, are there are there really very uh, yeah? I'm probably forgetting a host of tactics now that you can do as a Zerg to end the game early, right? But um, would you say that Zerg is more of a late game race? I'm not sure, right? Well, there's this build. Um, I don't know if you heard about it, but it's called Six Pool. Uh huh. <laughs> No, I mean, uh, the Zerg has, uh, has options early on, but uh, against the Protoss player, I do think that they feel more comfortable uh, doing something else. But there's a, there's a lot of things you can do. Uh, two base Muta, two base Roaches, it's not uh, beyond reason. Especially if your uh, your Protoss opponent uh, takes a, a very greedy third. This is not one of those, this is around the 8 minute mark. If you take a, a third around the 6, 7 minute mark, um, you can punish that with uh, with Roaches and, uh, and a lot of speed links behind mm -hmm. that. So there are definitely some uh, some aggressions as a Zerg player. Temple is something you see a lot. Right, of course, you might wonder watching this stream, if you don't play Starcraft at the same level as these guys are doing right now, you say, well, if I go for a third base as Protoss at the 8 minute mark, I usually die. How is it that Harsten can get away with it? Well, that's because he scouted his opponent, of course, and saw that he also went three bases, and that he wasn't going to attack him real anytime soon. Uh, so it's, it's all about knowing what your opponent is doing and reacting properly. And it's not Picking one build and doing it every time, because yeah, you might win some of the time, uh, but winning always or winning more than fifty percent of the time, um, that's that you can only do that by scouting properly. Yep, I mean, uh, sometimes you'll see uh, see a player execute a build uh, accidentally. You're just gonna mimic it, like you see a, a good two base push, and you'll uh, you'll mimic that build, and then you just get bailing busted, or you get a, you get temple or stuff like that, and you're like, wait, this works on stream, but doesn't work when I do it. No, nope, uh, just. Uh, <laughs> Just scouting, uh, scouting as well as uh, some game sense that you need to to pull some builds off, and you you get there. If you play a lot of StarCraft, you'll see a lot of things. You'll get used to a lot of positions, and we do see a little bit of push out here from Harston with uh, with the army of sentries. Yeah, trying to deny this fourth base from Hanfi. I think he's gonna get it. Yeah, and There's what a, will he do then? Brazilian force fields. Yeah, uh, he doesn't want to. He he does Ooh. not want to go into a Brazilian force field. <laughs> actually use one force field to get the drone there. Do you think we're going to see a recall? This is actually really good. He picks up three uh, sentries there. Wow. Yeah, no. Uh, really good. Which is yeah. yeah, we we do see recall. He just wants the knight at base. He, he stayed his welcome just a little bit too much, and he uh, the Zerkers caught him by surprise a little bit there. He didn't make a second line of force, but he lost more than he should have. Yeah. All right. So this is tough. Harrison now, I think forced to defend for a little bit. He still has more than enough sentries to defend and uh, keep his uh, chokes secure, even though they are quite large, as you can see. Yep, uh, definitely, and uh, it does look like uh, Hanfi is moving uh, on the map a little bit now. Uh, I don't think he's going to make anything happen with the uh, with the small amount of units. He just wants to uh, to kill those rocks, to poke in a little bit, see what's going on. And uh, yeah, chokes got just got bigger, yo. Yeah, but that's that's good. He's got to have more area to move. He likes surrounding the army. We've seen that on multiple occasions. Uh, Harstam does note that the rocks are now down, and he does not see a huge army following that. There are some circlings. Uh, the hydras are. Uh, are trailing, but uh, he doesn't want to commit. He's not committing right now, and uh, we do have that trademark uh, war prism coming up from Harston pretty soon. And uh, in, we've also got Colossus on the way. But on the other side of things, oh. an infestation pit. Do you think he's gonna go for the Vipers again, Frank? I'm not sure. And we we saw Photon Overcharge getting triggered uh, by Harston right now. This third base. Usually uh, a good commitment right now, and uh, Hempy taking out some stalkers. There's no blink. Blink is not finished yet. Blink is gonna finish pretty soon. This is a little bit of an anti timing uh, for Harston. Lost the. Uh, Tra well, traded his army a little bit, and the Zerg liked that. There's right. gonna be Blink now, though. He has to start utilizing that. He's still losing a few stocks. There you go, first Blink out. And uh, he needs to micro this properly. Ooh, sentries! As much. He's, he's still losing a lot of units. Hampy is getting a, a decent job done, but a good aggressive Blink. Gonna fill out a few of these units. Does lose one or two stalkers, but this is worth it, I feel like. And the first class is out. Alright, we see the big runaway from uh, Hanfi. By the way, I have to point out that People in the in the chat are cheering for another great Dutch Protoss player, one of the, the staple players of Dutch StarCraft. It is, of Shock. course, Shock. Shocky. <laughs> yep, uh, Shocky, uh, one of the, the, the very good players. Uh, he always uh, makes me laugh. He's always saying, yep, I'm there for the Dutch guys. I'm there to show some cheese as well. <laughs> cheese. <laughs> yeah, very young player. Uh, if, yeah. I, uh, if I would ever have to uh, recommend someone for good manners, I would, uh, I would definitely consider his name because he's yep. a very mana player. Mm -hmm. Very nice guy, just all around the night. He's been doing good. We're gonna show him later on, but not tonight, though. Not tonight. 
Alright. There's some fancy structures here. This uh this thing I'm looking at right now, this reminds me of uh of this game that I played way back in the day. It's called uh Alice Madness Returns. Or it was just Alice. Uh, American McGee's Alice, that's what it was called. It's like a shooter on the, in the Quake engine. And all these you know, very eerie settings. And, you, and Alice was warped as well. She had a knife and she killed everything. I love that game. It was uh, it was supposed to be an Alice in Wonderland, but horror, horror version, yeah. right? Exactly. I never I never played it, but I did see... Uh, I did read some uh, some reviews about it online uh, during that time. It's, uh, it's a while back. It's during the PlayStation 2 era, I think it was. It, it, I played it on the PC, though, but uh, it might be. Yeah, it was way back. Yeah, I always, uh, I always have a PC for the for the strategy games, and I have a, I used to have always a console for the uh, for the other game. Huh. Um, but yes, it does look like Harstem is making some things work in the in the main base of having yeah. the uh, force all of the drones off the mineral lines. Actually, uh, doing a good job. That Azelos did kill a few drones, but not too many. Uh, evacuations went on just before that. He also pressured the other side just a little bit, but no uh, no damage was done there. But all in all, uh, worth it. We do have yep. a lot of spine crawlers being added on and uh, movement out by some, uh, some Zerglings in the middle of the map. Wow, some Zerglings just ran into a laser there. That's not what you want to do. No, you don't want to. <laughs> it's, not, uh, it's not like, uh, what do you want to do this uh, this fine Wednesday evening? Well, uh, <laughs> running into a laser seems uh, seems like fun. We do have uh, plus three ground weapons almost finishing up from uh, from Arsene. That's uh, definitely worth noting against the 1-1 one -one upgrade from his circle opponent. An ultra list then is on the way as well. But first, we're going to see a skirmish right here. And uh, the Vipers are there. Storm. And no very storm. good lightning clouds, actually. Wow. And after that pulling in, that's a feedbacks? good position. No feedbacks. And another pull. This is uh, getting a little bit out of hand for Arsene. He is losing a lot. And wow. Happy's actually killing all of the Holy shit. To the wrong side. And... I don't know if it's holy, but it's definitely smelly for Harstam right now because he just loses his whole army against Roach's Hydras and some excellent Whoa. play from Hamphy.